Hi, I'm Cisco with Actrobotic and I'm here to share with you another tip for working with your ESP8266 and your ESP32 microcontrollers. In other videos, we've seen how to write code that runs on the ESP8266 or on the ESP32 separately. But what happens when we need to write code that runs on both? Today, I'm gonna show you the steps that you can take so that a single piece of code runs on both the ESP8266 and the ESP32. I'm gonna be doing so using the Arduino IDE. So for today, I'm gonna be using the Wemos D1 Mini family of boards. They're great because of their small form factor and the wide availability of shields. I'm gonna be using the standard Wemos D1 Mini for the ESP8266 and a Wemos compatible board carrying the ESP32 as well as a shield carrying the BMP180 barometric pressure sensor. I'll leave a link in the description of the video so you can check out the boards on my little shop on Amazon. The first thing I'll do is open up the Arduino IDE and I'll work with an empty sketch. I'll save it onto my desktop and I'll give it the name ESPX underscore check. The trick to write code that's compatible with the ESP8266 and the ESP32 is to use at the beginning of the sketch this if defined statement. So if it's defined that the ESP8266 is being used, we want to include a library that's gonna be for that particular board. In this case, I'll use ESP8266 Wi-Fi.h. If it's defined that we're using the ESP32 that can be checked with this statement, then I want to include a library that'll give me the same functionality, but its name differently. In this case, it's Wi-Fi.h. Otherwise, if we're not using either of the boards, then I simply wanna give an error during compilation that'll say, hey, we're not using either the ESP8266 or the ESP32. So you might be wondering, where does this keywords ESP8266 and ESP32 come from? They're part of the Arduino IDE of the core code, and we installed that when we installed support for those particular architectures. But how our sketch knows that those particular keywords are defined is when we select through the tools menu what board we're using. So say if I'm compiling code for the Wemos compatible board for the ESP32, I go ahead and select this, and when I compile, then this keyword is gonna be defined, but this one isn't. And when I select the other board, then the opposite is what happens. So to test things out, I'm simply gonna run a Wi-Fi scan and I'll start in my setup function by initializing the serial communication. Then I'll set the operating mode to station. Notice that I don't have to worry when I make the statements if it's for the ESP8266 or for the ESP32. And that's because both of those libraries use the same built-in Wi-Fi object. Later, I'm gonna show you what happens if we have two different libraries that do not have things in common. But for now, we can simply use the Wi-Fi object. Next thing I'll do is disconnect to make sure it's not connected to anything before running the scan. And then I'll delay for a little bit. Then in my loop function, I'm gonna run the scan networks method from the Wi-Fi object, and that'll return the number of networks that are available nearby. I'll print how many we found, and assuming that the result is greater than zero, I'll iterate through all of them to print out the SSID and the signal strength for each one of them. I'll use the iterator for the for loop 
to simply say which network is found. Just give it a number. Then we can get the SSID by using the Wi-Fi object. We simply need to give it the iterator for printing out the network that we want. And then we can add similarly the signal strength. I'll do a little bit of formatting by putting it in parentheses. And we can use the RSSI method for getting that signal strength. Copy this guy to close the parentheses. And we'll leave it at that. We want to just give it a little bit of a delay before we print out the next value. And once all the networks are printed out, then I just want to give it a new line by using the print ln method. Then before the next scan, I'll give it a bit of a delay. Before this next step, make sure you go through our other videos and set up your boards to work with the Arduino IDE. I'll go ahead and connect the boards over USB. I'll start with the ESP32. Go to the tools menu, select the correct port as well as the correct board and upload the code. After that's done, I can open the serial monitor, make sure that the baud rate is set at the 115-200 option, and see all the networks nearby being printed out on screen. I'll go ahead and close it, and connect the other board over USB, the one carrying the ESP8266. Go through the tools menu once again, select the correct board, as well as the correct port. Then hit upload once again. And open the serial monitor to see the results. And indeed things are working. With that simple check at the beginning of the code, we can know whether we're using the ESP8266 or the ESP32 and use the corresponding library. But if you're skeptical like me, then we're not really sure if it's working, right? The code looks the same. So one more test we can do is just select another board. Let's say the Arduino Genuino Uno and try to compile the code. We can see that the error that we wrote that not using the ESP8266 or ESP32 is printed out. So indeed that statement is working. Usually libraries that work for the ESP8266 and the ESP32 will try to maintain some compatibility, like writing the same name for their methods and things like that. But I wanna prepare you for when that's not the case. So just really quickly, let's do one more test. I'll go ahead and open a new sketch I'll save it onto my desktop and I'll give it the name ESPX underscore check underscore BMP 180. Next, I'm going to install a couple of libraries to use that sensor. I'll go first through the sketch menu and then include library and manage libraries. I'll search for BMP 180 and I'll install the first one by Adafruit. I'll go ahead and close that. And for my second one, it's not available through the library manager. It's from SparkFun. So I'll go ahead and download it. I'll leave the link in the description of the video. Uncompress it. And remember to change this last bit that says dash master and delete it. That way you make sure that it works with all different versions of the Arduino IDE. I'll go to my documents, the Arduino folder, libraries, and paste it in there right next to the Adafruit one. To make sure it's available in the Arduino IDE, I'll go ahead and restart it. To expedite things, I'll just copy paste the same set of statements I made in the previous piece of code and I'll just change the header files for the ones we want to actually use. 
For the ESP8266, we're gonna be using the one by Adafruit, and for the ESP32, we're gonna be using the one from SparkFun. One thing to note about these libraries is that because they communicate over I2C, they both work with both boards without the statements. It's just in case you find other libraries that are not cross compatible, you know exactly what you need to do. So the first thing we can do is the objects that we're going to need in our code, we can give it the same name. For example, the instance of the Adafruit class, we're going to name it BMP and the instance for the SparkFun BMP 180 class, we're also gonna name it BMP. That's gonna save us a bit of work as we're writing the rest of the code. In the setup function, we're simply gonna initialize serial communication. And both libraries need to run their begin method of their class instances. So we can simply get away with just writing one statement. Then we know we wanna get measurements from the sensor and just to make things short, I'll just work with temperature. I'll define that as a double and I'll simply use a user defined function that I'll write out later that I'll call get temperature. Then we want to print it out to the serial monitor. The default temperature for both libraries is in degrees Celsius. In between measurements, I'll simply wait a couple of seconds. Then we define that function that returns a double that I'll name get temperature. This is where we need to be careful and use the different methods for each library. So in the case that we're using the Adafruit library, so we can once again check to see if that ESP8266 keyword is defined. We can simply use the BMP object to run the read temperature method. However, if we're using the SparkPhone library, we need to do things a little bit differently. So I'll simply say else for the sakes of being brief. I'll start by declaring a double variable that I'll call T. Then the way the library works is that it needs a delay of the amount of milliseconds that are returned by this method called start temperature. In the case of the Adafruit library, we needed to do simply a single call to a single method. In the case of the SparkPhone library, it's a little bit more complex. Then after that delay, we can call a method that is called get temperature. And that method takes a parameter that it's of type double that I already declared. Notice that even though the methods do the same thing, they're named differently. So that's why we need to separate them as we have with the if defined statements. Once that value is stored on our variable t, we can return it. And end that if defined statement. Make sure that the shield is connected. And we're ready to test things out. I'll go ahead and go through the tools menu to select the correct board. I have the ESP8266 currently connected. And I'll double check that the correct port is also selected. Then I can go ahead and upload the code. Open up the serial monitor. And see the temperature being displayed. If we put our finger on top of the sensor, then we can change it by a few degrees just to test things out. And removing it should bring it back down. Then we can do the same for the ESP32 board. Go ahead and connect the shield first, which is the way we should be doing it always. 
and then connect power. We can use the tools menu to change the board as well as the port. Upload the code once again and open up the zero monitor to see the SparkFun library in action. We can see that it has similar measurements. There are a few degrees lower. The sensor might be a little bit colder, but if I put my finger on top of it, then we can see that the temperature quickly rises to about the same levels we had before. Then if we remove it, it should go back down. So there we have it. We've successfully found a way to write a single piece of code that works with both the ESP8266 and the ESP32. In case the libraries have different methods, we learn how to deal with that. But for the most part, they should be compatible, keep the same calls, the same methods to make life easier. If you like my videos, I invite you to go to my Patreon page and if you can, chip in a buck or two that really helps me put in more time into the videos. But whatever you do, don't forget to like, subscribe, or leave me a comment. I'm also very active on social media, so if you want to follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, you can, and you can ask me questions, suggest what the next topic should be for my next video. And we're even using the community tab of the channel, so you can jump on there and ask any questions as well. Until next time.